and welcome to another of Calkine Media's popular Invest Nest webinar series. Today, we're talking about the yellow metal being on an up move with insights from two ASX gold exploration players. My name is Rachel Jones. I'm anchor and reporter here at Calkine TV. I'll be your moderator for today's event. Now, before going ahead with the session, it's important that you're aware that this webinar is for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation to engage in any investment activity under discussion. We're neither licensed nor qualified to provide investment advice through this platform. Now, the idea of InvestNest webinar is to present our audience with a panel of experts who share the potential of their businesses and their growth strategies, along with their company's value and vision. And not just this, we uncover the unheard stories from the business leaders on how they worked towards success and innovation. The event aims at sharing heaps of insightful business information and guidance on emerging themes and breakthrough trends in the Australian markets. The business presentation will last for around 15 minutes by individual speakers and will be followed by five minutes of questions and answers. The webinar attendees can post their questions in the Q&A chat box during the webinar and the business leaders will answer your questions at the end. Now, if due to time constraints, we're unable to get to your questions live, you can send us your questions at info at And we'll get your emails answered by our panelists. Now, the global price of gold is firming up as investors flock to the safe haven amid a banking crises around the world. Fears of inflation and global economic uncertainty are also playing a part in keeping the demand for gold high. A strong gold price is conducive for gold explorers and producers. And Australia is one of the world's top gold producers, with several Australian companies engaged in exploration and mining. Now, given this backdrop, the focus is shifting to efficient resource companies that are creating and catering to the discovery exploration or commercial production of gold. Here is your golden opportunity to meet two ASX exploration players and learn more about their execution plans. I'm happy to introduce our two speakers for the day from the leadership team of Calcine Media's Value Clients. James Wilson, CEO and Managing Director at Alchemy Resources and Don Smith, Managing Director at Tempest Minerals. So let's welcome our first speaker of the day, James, CEO and Managing Director of Alchemy. He's a geologist with extensive experience in the exploration industry with deep expertise in operational aspects, both in Australia and the overseas market. He's been working in the industry for more than one and a half decades with exposure to varied metals, including gold, nickel and copper. Notably, James has in the past also worked in the capacity of Senior Research Analyst for Resources at Argonaut Securities. He counts the Australian Institute of Company Directors as his alma mater. Alchemy Resources is an AXS listed company with gold exploration with exploration interests related to the base metal, nickel and cobalt. The company's portfolio is pretty wide and consists of fully owned projects including the Coroni Gold and Lake Rebecca for exploring golds and partly owned projects such as Cobar Basin, Central Lachlan Ford Belt for gold, as well as base metals exploration. Well, welcome to Calgo Media's Investness webinar, James. Please share your presentation deck and take over the virtual stage. Thank you, Rachel, and uh, thank you, Calcine Media, for the opportunity to present today. I'll, uh, as uh, Rachel just said, I'll just share my screen and uh, I'll push forward with that so everybody can see that OK. Um, Alchemy Resources, in a nutshell, is a, uh, is a diverse company with uh, assets across Australia. Uh, I'll just flick to a map on the page two here with the uh, obligatory disclaimer. Feel free to read that at your leisure. And, um, yeah, so as I said, uh, uh, Alchemy is a, a, a diverse asset company, uh, numerous gold projects within Australia, as well as more recently discovered uh, lithium and base metals within those uh, those same gold uh, assets and tenure. And I'll outline that a little bit as we go on. 
Uh, Caroni, as I said, is uh, is in uh, near Kalgoorlie. It's a straight drive out along the train line there, a very easy run. Uh, hour out, now we're back into Kalgoorlie, so you can be that back there for a beer in the afternoon after drilling, if so, uh, so interested. And uh, it's a really, really good spot and very underexplored. Um, in the Briar, we own 20% interest with uh, Sandfire Resources. Everybody knows those guys after their degreaser discovery. And we have the 10 year long strike of those guys and in the, uh, the Horseshoe Lights region. And we also have a 20% interest with Superior Gold, an active gold miner. Uh, in the region and currently being uh, under a scheme of arrangement to be uh, merged with Catalyst Metals. So yeah, very exciting up there as well. In New South Wales, our, our Yellow Mountain uh, high grade copper gold project. Uh, we've made some advancements with that and we're looking to try and get on the ground in the next few months, hopefully, uh, to drill that. And uh, Wesley and our high purity alumina and nickel cobalt resource of about 20 million tonnes uh, and our overflow asset uh, just down the road from Yellow Mountain, which is a high grade gold lead zinc asset, which is very exciting as well. And I'll, I'll just run through those uh, shortly. Uh, we're cheap on a, uh, on a paper basis. Uh, we've got a market cap of about 17 million. As of today, cash of about 6 million in the bank. We were lucky enough to raise last year. Um, and we put 5.5 million away in November. Uh, so we're spending that sparingly at the moment, uh, given the market conditions, but also trying to be as aggressive as, as we can on the ground. So putting all those dollars into the ground and an enterprise value of about $11 million. So uh, we think we're pretty cheap what we have. Uh, shareholders includes Northern Star at 6.6%. It's good validation of what projects we have and uh, board management and investors in the top 20 roughly own about 42% of the stock. So no one's taking us over anytime soon without our blessing. Uh, which is uh, which is good that stock's very tightly held. The company has got some very, very uh, uh, sort of good names on the board, good quality sort of long-term geology and uh, corporate names. Lindsay Dudfield, my chairman, is also the executive director of Jindalee Resources, which owns the uh, largest undeveloped uh, lithium deposit in the US. Um, I myself, as, as Rachel pointed out, I've spent a number of years in broking. I'm a geologist by trade, uh, but I spent a lot of time as an analyst. So uh, I try to sort of use those skills gained in that uh, with the institutional and retail market and uh, try to apply them in day-to-day in -day with Alchemy to, uh, to, to, to generate value with our shareholders. Uh, Liza Carpine, she's also currently a director of Mincor, who's being uh, taken over by the, uh, the Wiley Group at the moment. And, uh, and Anthony and Carly, our non-exec director and co-sec, have got broad and vast experience in the corporate sector. Um, share price, obviously, for an explorer has been quite up and down. The announcement of our lithium discovery within our gold province obviously saw the, uh, the share price spike. And uh, like everybody at the moment, sort of we're all sort of tailing off at the moment in a, uh, in a reasonably sort of uh, making a lot of the explorers cheaper at the moment, uh, in spite of some decent news flow coming up, we think. So uh, stay tuned and, uh, and I'll, I'll fill you in on that as we go. So uh, the Western Australian assets that we have, uh, gold and battery metals, uh, this area in here at Caroni um, is uh, just out of Kalgoorlie along the train line there. It's very easy to get to by car, uh, has Telstra coverage, and it's been predominantly explored for gold and uh, had been for a long time. A lot of explorers come in with RAB and air core rigs, drill to try and find the super gene ore in the, in the oxide package. They couldn't find anything, they walked away. And that's what we've found probably that's been gone on for probably about the last 70 years in this region, goes all the way back to Western mining. Um, we came in, started looking a bit more holistically at things, uh, looking a lot more at structure and spending a lot, a lot of time sort of with, with smart sort of structural consultants to, uh, to figure out the best way forward. And we've had a win there. We've, we've generated 111,000 ounces of resources at uh, Caroni back in September, 2021. All of those are relatively open pitable or uh, within 100 meters of service. And they're all right next door to the the Aldus mine here, it's owned by Silver Lake. That is an active mining operation in there. Um, subsequent to that, we also mined some of our historical data and we found lithium prospectivity on the tenements as well. And that's <clears throat> resulted in a lot of the interest in the stock probably over the last 12 months with the lithium boom as well. So to be able to combine gold and lithium exploration within the one set of tenements is, is fantastic. And it's a good value add to be able to go and do exploration for multiple commodities at the same time. Uh, at Lake Rebecca, this sits about 60 kilometers to the north. Um, this sits next to the uh, Romelius operations at uh, Rebecca over here and Northern Stars Caruso Dam, 5 million ounce Caruso Dam operation to the west there and we're sandwiched in between. Um, the other interesting thing in this belt is that uh, Romelius is currently bidding on Breaker and if they get that ground, that will make 
basically Alchemy and Remelius, the two big uh, tenement holders in the region, with Alchemy being the single largest one in terms of area. So we've got a really good belt scale play. It's opportunistic, it's strategic, and it's uh, prospective as well. It also happens to sit, I might add as well, just next to all the major lithium operations that have since come out with Baldania, with Lion Town, uh, Mount Marion owned by uh, Mineral Resources, and uh, Manor, our neighbours up the road here at Global Lithium as well. So uh, lots going on in the region. Just looking at Coroni a little bit closer, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very big land package. It's uh, this area here on the zone is probably about 90 kilometres in strike, uh, but we're no slouches in getting work done on the ground. We've been doing regional soil sampling up to about 50 kilometres south of our main sort of project area up here at, uh, at Coroni and uh, the, the, the Pecan and, and uh, Hickory lithium targets. Um, everything we do has sort of multiple overlays. We're looking for gold and lithium at the same time with the sampling that we do. So we try and maximise the, uh, the work in the ground. Our three resources are in here. The, um, it's called the KZ5, Taupo and uh, Pymelia assets. They're 111,000 ounces of existing gold resources. It sits right next to the Aldus mining operations owned by Silver Lake in the middle there. And all our lithium targets are sitting around that. So as you can see, we've, we've got a lot of soil sampling going on at the moment up here at Manhattan for gold and lithium, over here at Row Hills as well for gold and lithium as well, and uh, another one just to the, 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 the east of Row Hills there as well. And those results are starting to come in now and we'll report them to the market once they're completed. Um, we did do a bunch of analyses here sort of to the south last year and generated some very big lithium targets. And we're also going back to look at them for gold as well. So it's a very exciting region. There's a lot to attack. And what you'll see with many other companies is they may actually have um, uh, several, you know, this, this tenement area will be divided up into three or four with some other smaller explorers um, uh, for what they have. So we've got a very, very big land position and uh, it's very strategic as well. Um, just sort of focusing on the lithium just for one moment. Uh, this is our position in, in uh, respect to where Global Lithium is. We're just eight kilometres down the road along this prospective fertile granite here. And this is our primary target area here at Pecan. Uh, this is the white gold, if you would, I suppose, uh, or, or purple gold, depending on where you are. It's white in our area, part of the world, the spodumene. And we did a drill program and we hit spodumene in that, albeit only over a few metres. But this area, all the way up to our border there, which is perspective, is about sort of probably seven kilometres long by two kilometres wide. And that's just one of 15 different areas we're looking at. Uh, the idea is that you're looking around the uh, fertile granite here. Uh, which is the origin of a lot of the lithium in the region. And we've got the lion's share of ground, as you can see, sort of surrounding that position in there. And it's a great place to be. So it's just a function of the more you drill, the more you find. And uh, we're not, not slouching in that respect in, uh, in trying to discover it. Um, just again, another soil geochemistry map. You can see the Cardunia granite there, the source granite for the region and uh, the gold deposits in here. That's our little sort of gold deposit in there at Taupo. There's another one over here called KZ5 and it sits immediately adjacent to all the lithium uh, targets that we have as well. And the train line goes right the way through there. So really, really easy to get to on the road and an airstrip right next to the site too. So uh, for when investors want to fly in and have a look. Um, just uh, very, just focusing very sort of briefly on the lithium again, that was what sort of lithium looks like under a UV light in the spodumene. Uh, really great to see you did a small drill program and hit it in, uh, in all the holes in sort of lower grade capacity got uh, a couple of meters there at half a percent there. So again, this zone is over six kilometers long. This was testing an area that was uh, sort of, you know, 500 to a thousand meters long. So very, very small uh, initial drill program. But we're proof of concept. We proved there was spodumene there and uh, we're very excited by that. And our little gold deposit just sits sort of just off to the left there. And there's more to come with that too. Um, the most recent work that we've been doing, uh, because a lot of the, uh, the structures in this part of the world uh, undercover. Uh, so there's a big river channel that comes through here. Um, we were trying to just try and assess the best course of action going forward. We've got magnetics over at Drone Mag um, and we did a big gravity survey in there uh, to try and assess all the targets. We had we were very successful in outlining some of the structures um, uh, late last year and we expanded that over a six kilometre by two kilometre area to, uh, to assess. So uh, the results of that are pending and we should have some news on that fairly soon, we think, once we've had a sit down with our consultant. Um, just in terms of the, uh, the further work, sort of up to 60 kilometres south of that, where we were looking recently was sort of up here. Uh, and this is sort of all the soil geochemistry we've been doing. It's been generating anomalies 15 kilometres by 5 kilometres there at, at Alder. Again, 15 kilometres by sort of 2 kilometres wide at Red Oak. 
there's just so much to follow up and uh, we are a small company so we get to it in stages um, but uh, this is sort of big companies kind of scale prospectivity and we're very excited by that. Um, just in terms of Lake Rebecca moving up to the north there you can see the land position that we have there where Alchemy has everything in red and the green and the uh, the green is uh, St Barbara and uh, the orange there is Breaker. So once Breaker gets taken over well perhaps by uh, Romelius as that goes on then that would make Alchemy and Romelius the biggest landholders in the region with Alchemy being uh, largest by a factor of two. Right in between some of the giants up there, obviously Northern Star and uh, Romelius with their two deposits, uh, multi-million ounce players along with Breaker as well. So it's a great land position to be in and never systematically explored for lithium and largely a lot not for gold either, which is great for us. Um, just looking at the gold prospectivity, this is a high resolution drone mag image of the Coroni area. And a lot of the area, as I said before, was um, was looked at, but it was just done by like shallow RAB and air core drilling, and they really didn't get through the younger cover a lot of the time. So we're coming back with very uh, more advanced methods, more powerful drill rigs. The technology that now exists in 2023 is a lot better than was going on in 1990. You know, we're using drone magnetics uh, instead of aeroplanes aer to fly these things. You know, the, just the technology is a step change better, and uh, we're just doing it better. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be attacking that as we attack all those other targets as well. Um, just looking at the Briar Basin joint venture that we have with uh, Superior and, uh, and uh, Sandfire. Uh, the red is the Sandfire tenements, a long strike from the Degrusa copper mine, a uh, very famous copper mine in its discovery back uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, the blue is all the tenements that we share with Superior Gold. So next to two existing mining operations, um, Sandfire has spent around about 19 million on our tenure here, which we own 20% of that. It's all free carry to production if they find anything. I haven't found anything yet but uh, they're certainly not slouches in actually spending money up there. So it's great for a junior like us to have uh, opportunity and a JV on those kind of tenements with that kind of spend. That's big uh, tier one uh, company spend and uh, we're sort of right in the guts of that, which is great. Um, just moving to New South Wales very briefly, we have uh, a few assets there that are quite advanced. We have the Yellow Mountain asset right next door to Kingston Resources Mineral Hill and next to Aurelia Metals Hera Deposit, uh, operations rather. We have the Overflow Mine, which is an existing pre-resource uh, gold lead zinc uh, asset and uh, the Overflow North, which is sort of pure play exploration. And uh, that's quite exciting. I'll just run through those very briefly. Um, Yellow Mountain, really great asset. Hasn't been drilled since 1986. Uh, intercepts such as 52 metres at half a gram gold, 0.3% copper, uh, 24 metres at 1% copper from surface and 1% lead. Um, some gold in there as well. So, but big, thick intercepts. Hasn't really ever been tested, as I said, so not since the 80s. We're looking at getting back in there in the next few months. Uh, we were just talking about land access agreements with our uh, uh, native title claimants on there just last week in Cobar. So we're hopeful that we'll have a resolution on that pretty quick and we'll be on the ground within days after that happens. And uh, we aim to drill that as quickly as possible. Um, grab samples from the old mine uh, came back as uh, up to 7.15% copper and 6.5% lead. And that's a picture of the stuff that was taken. So there's copper sitting at surface from the old mine. It spoils but it's still representative of what's there. Uh, the overflow asset, which is about 20 kilometers north, this is really exciting. It's um, it's very high grade gold lead zinc. It looks like the Hera ore uh, that Aurelia owns up the road. And you can see there on the screen, 4.65 meters at 8.5 grams, uh, plus 13% zinc, 7% lead, uh, a, a smattering of really, really high grades there. The, the big system, big thing with uh, Cobar projects is drilling at depth and that's what we're really got to do drill these things as they they mature at depth like every other deposit in the region so yeah very exciting we'll be on the ground there this year with that um we also have a a, a 20 million ton uh, um, uh nickel cobalt resource obviously it's a gold uh, story today that we're talking about but it just shows you the quality of the asset base that we have big 20 million ton 0.8 nickel 0.05 cobalt as well as a 7 million ton 21 percent alumina asset up there that we can generate uh, a uh, almost a 4n um, HPA product, high purity alumina product out of there. So with the battery metals, it's covered in this part of the world as well. And uh, really not sort of being valued, uh, factored into our valuation. So yeah, where are we at? Indicative expiration timeline, strong news flow. We're not wasting any time putting money into the ground. Air core drilling, we did two drill programs in the second half of last year at Caroni. Third one's coming up in the second quarter of this year. We've done gravity surveys, we've done two of them, uh, done regional soils are out there. They're, we're throwing money at this thing, there's no tomorrow. And in the meantime, we're free carried on the Superior Gold JV, Sandfire JV. We don't have to spend any money on that. 
and just working away the land access in New South Wales on the Cobar Basin, Yellow Mountain in particular, because it's very high grade. And then we'll look at doing Yellow Mountain and overflow probably mid-year this year. At the same time, we just got granted the tenement access agreements at Lake Rebecca. So we've got that uh, late last year, targeting studies being done. We've done soil sampling up there and we're just waiting on the first set of results. And so, uh, yeah, we're ticking quite a lot over. I think we're doing quite a lot for a small company that we are. Uh, obviously, you can always do more and uh, the more you drill, the more you find. And uh, we're not going to die not knowing. So, uh, yeah, uh, enterprise value of $11 million, we're cheap. We've got optionality with uh, critical metals. Uh, we are gold focused as with the logo there. Uh, we have resources in the ground, active like M&A ongoing in our region and uh, a lot of JVs, free carry to production and, uh, and battery metals optionality in New South Wales as well. So lots of things to test. Uh, lots of things to do this year. So yeah, um, thank you for your time today. And uh, I might just uh, leave it there. That's the, uh, the disclaimer at the back. Thank you, James. That was a fantastic presentation. Thank you so much there for peeling back the layers of alchemy. Very insightful and very interesting to see your, your presentation there. Now, next, we're going to move on to um, our next presenter, Mr. Don Smith. He's the Managing Director of Tempest Minerals. Now, he's a geologist and an entrepreneur with over 20 years experience in the mining industry. He served as varied positions in exploration, operational and development, as well as consultant segments in companies across 10 countries. Now, he holds experience in a diverse range of commodities, including base and precious metals, and also energy minerals. He's a graduate of science from Newcastle University and a postgraduate in business administration from the Australian Institute of Business. He's also a member of the Australasian Institute of Mining and Metallurgy and a member of the Australian Institute of Geoscientists. Now, Tempest Minerals has been building up on its belief that the time of emergence of the next generation of sustainable resource companies has come. This company aims to discover and develop high potential precious base and energy metal projects with a specific focus on sustainable use of science, innovation and data driven risk weighted methods. Tempest is leading a project pipeline built with its innovation, assertive hands on exploration methods to identify high growth assets convertible on a discovery or divestiture basis. So welcome to Calcai Media's Invest Nest webinar, Don Smith. And if you could open up and share your presentation deck and take over the virtual stage. Thank you. And thank you very much for that uh, extensive introduction and uh, great presentation, Jane. It'll be a hard one to follow. All right, so welcome to Tempest Minerals. For those who are unaware of our company, uh, we're an ASX Junior Explorer. Uh, and development company, as, as I was just kindly introduced. I've got a, a short quote there from uh, William Shakespeare, uh, summarizing it, uh, showing that uh, our home country here in Australia has a, a very uh, rich uh, opportunity. So a bit about Tempest. Uh, we are a commodity uh, agnostic. I, I, I don't say that really. Uh, we, we are certainly looking for copper and gold uh, in our exploration portfolio. We're focused here in Western Australia, but we have some commercial uh, exposure in a number of places around the globe. Uh, we have quite a modest uh, market capitalization at the moment, just under $10 million. And we've got a, uh, a fair bit of cash there, which we also raised last year. We've got a fantastic team uh, at Tempest, uh, including our board, which includes high hitters such as Brian Muller and uh, Andrew Haythorpe, and of course, on virtual is well known for in engineering and mining circles. Uh, we've also got a great team, uh, including consultants, and we've got Tim Bevis running out as our senior geologist at the moment. So I won't uh, harp too much about sustainability. That is a very important topic uh, for the investment community at the moment. However, it is not something new that we've just tacked on. It's the way that we've always run the company. So uh, the the social, environmental governance, all that kind of thing, they're at the forefront before we do anything. Innovation is something that I want to talk about. Uh, we're very, very keen on technology and, and trying new things. 
Uh, some examples of that are uh, on the right hand side, you can see we've got one of our phone apps that we developed um, running there. And uh, on the left hand side, you can see that we've got the box scan unit, which is the only one public available here in Western Australia. We're using it currently to scan all our core and all our samples, which gives us objective data, uh, not interpretive data and, and uh, so much more efficient way uh, use of, of time and people uh, in the country with the highest wages in the world. So a bit about our projects, uh, as I mentioned, it's Western Australia focused, but we have commercial uh, influence on, on around the world, excuse me. And uh, if we go to our focus, we've got two, two main project areas at the moment uh, nearby each other. One is the Yalgu region and the other is the Mount Magnet region. For those who are unfamiliar with Yalgu, it's about five hours drive north of Perth. Uh, despite being a, a relatively low profile area, it has uh, a very large history, uh, including about half a dozen world-class mines already there. Um, and you can see the yellow ones, given we have a gold focus today, the yellow ones are all the gold mines uh, and the large spheres are world-class gold mines. So larger than half a million ounces or, or one million ounces. Another thing about Yalgu is to keep in mind is the fantastic infrastructure. So it has rail, power, water, telecoms, you name it, and and it's a well-established area. Multiple freeway, uh, multiple highways go essentially straight through the project. Right. So one part of our Yalgu Holdings is the Malaya project. So this had a relatively high-profile uh, introduction last year about this time. Uh, the the background behind this project is we were looking at uh, a gold project, uh, which is part of this this picture here. It's the left at bottom left-hand corner. We were looking at that uh, several years ago with the model uh, similar to the De Grey projects in the Pilbara, in that it's an intrusive related gold system. And, and we've proven that that is the case and we've drilled and shown that there is mineralization there. Uh, but while we're looking at that, we looked further afield and we realized that some of the data didn't match the geological maps of the area. And that led us to, to realize that uh, where the blue line with the arrows on it, that is a new province of the Yalgu field, which has never been explored. So none of that area has ever had even a lease on it before. And we went out, we did soil sampling, all this type of stuff. And then this time last year, we, we bit the bullet and we drilled our very first hole into this area. And uh, they were two deep holes. They weren't aiming specifically at mineralization. Uh, they were purely to understand this geology and the science underneath because it's a whole new area. No one knows what's there. And we had a very interesting mineralization in those and that, that certainly gave us a bit of uh, exposure on the market at the time. Uh, since then, uh, we have had no shortage of activities going on. We've uh, completed four drilling programs. Uh, we've done multiple geophysics surveys. We've had extensive uh, soil sampling going on and uh, basically all of our work has had some mineralization or another in it which is uh, quite unprecedented I think so it shows the fertility of our Yalgu region at the least. Here's some of the results we put out uh, earlier in the year which shows that uh, not only do we have gold and base metal potential here but also rare earths so as I mentioned it's very fertile there's things going on here and uh, we're, we're currently putting this geological picture together so that we can uh, extend our exploration uh, into many of these multiple, multiple targets that we have. Not focusing on gold at the moment, but quickly mentioning that uh, this is one drill line through that work we were doing last year. And you can see that if, uh, if we plot this by normal rocks, these would be grey thin lines, but the amount of copper in these drill holes, although not economic at this point, is quite extreme. There's there's serious anomalies that are going on here. So we're very excited to keep honing in and find out where the where the next mine is going to be. Here's something we uh, we announced uh, a few weeks ago, but we had an update yesterday. Uh, this is our our new target for the Malaya project. Uh, the the bottom left, you can see the, the pink and blue. That's called the remorse target uh, and that is frankly uh, very exciting for us uh, it's very very rare that you see coherent anomalies like this and uh, we we have zinc copper 
and then we're grading into nickel, the yellow, and then into rare earths in the green. So uh, we're very excited to get drill rigs on the ground and find out what's going on here uh, under the ground. And uh, yeah, there'll be some more news coming on that. Moving on to Mount Magnet. Uh, this is another one of our key strategic holdings. Uh, we've got about 20 square kilometers here and it's only five kilometers away from the nearest mill and it's right, basically right in town. Here's some pictures of it. There's some, some background on Mount Magnet. Uh, we've got very large players around us, Westgold, Remelius, uh, and, and others, uh, including Genesis. And there's been a history here of focusing on vein style gold, but in the last few years, there's more of a understanding that this is a, more of an intrusive related gold system as well, or, or something even approaching porphyry in some ways. And uh, these big thick intersects, you can see that other companies are getting their 100 meters of a gram, 100, 170 meters of two grams. This is reflective of what we think is the geology happening on our project as well. And if you see at the, the bottom of our holding, which is the blue color, you see there is a Britannia. Um, this is an old pit there. And long strike from that, we've got some old workings that aren't recorded anywhere. And uh, the waste dumps of that have multiple grams in them. So we're very keen to get in there. We've, we've been doing a lot of geology and we've got some more news coming out on that soon, but we're very excited to get in there and start exploring as well. So we think there's a real opportunity to provide extra production capacity to that very large underutilized mill there in that magnet. So while we're on gold, we, uh, we also have uh, some exposure to uh, a very up exciting upcoming PNG project called Tolakuma and also the Mount Peg project there. So we looked at doing a deal with these guys last year. Uh, we couldn't quite get that over the line, but we're very keen on the project. So we've decided to invest uh, $1 million in that and uh, to help progress that. And that puts us more in the line of uh, moving out of exploration into development company, which is our, our ultimate strategy. Uh, we're very excited that uh, these guys will be IPOing soon and uh, then uh, that is a, hopefully a, a very sound investment for us as that project gets developed. Lithium, I won't speak about too much, uh, except that we have uh, a number of projects here in Western Australia. We are currently uh, planning to merge those projects with a US based asset uh, to create a, a new entity, which will focus on the lithium because we don't believe we're getting the, the value on the market that we should be for that lithium exposure. Similarly, we, we have some commercial agreements on uh, projects in, in other places, which is bringing revenue in for us for one, uh, but also uh, a lot of uh, blue sky upside for the future. So what's next? We've got quite a bit going on. Uh, we're currently rebuilding our, our budget and our exploration plans on based on the, uh, the new information that we've been receiving in the last uh, few months. And uh, But at the very minimum, we're going to have drilling at the remorse target. We're going to have uh, follow-up drilling on the work we did last year. Uh, we'll be exploring all our other projects and uh, yeah, there's a new project pipeline in the works. So uh, as well as work at Mount Magnet and the corporate things I mentioned. So yeah, quite a lot going on. A lot of news flow, very exciting. And uh, some key points on us are we're a multi-commodity, although we do love gold and that is a, a, big, a big thing of ours. And uh, we're certainly attractively priced with, uh, with a lot of news flow coming up. Um, if anyone would like to learn more, feel free to reach out and I also encourage you to check out our, our offerings such as YouTube and our Investor Hub mentioned here or uh, and many other channels as well. That's it. Excellent. Thanks so much for your time there, Don. That's really interesting to get a really um, good view into Tempest and there's some very exciting things there and what we do need to remember is that gold isn't the only metal. <laughs> So with that, thanks for your presentation. I'd like to move on now and ask our viewers to key in some questions for our presenters, please. Um, we have one question that has come in now from Sandra Lopez. Thanks, Sandra, for asking. She And I th presume this goes out to both presenters. What are the near-term exploration targets of Alchemy Resources? Sorry, she wants to know um, the near-term exploration targets of Alchemy. James, if you'd like to take that one. Yeah, sure. Thanks for the question. 
Um, uh, probably the most uh, nearest term one is is the uh, Coroni um, gold and lithium targets because we've got the most amount of advanced data on that. Um, that's an easy one. We'll be hopefully drilling that by sort of, well, hopefully before the end of the quarter, uh, the current quarter, so the June quarter. Um, and then a second tier to that, um, once we can actually get by the, uh, the land access agreement uh, with our native title counterparts in New South Wales, uh, which we think will happen reasonably soon, then we'll be on the ground drilling Yellow Mountain uh, almost like within a month after that, which is that 7% uh, copper gold lead zinc uh, target that we have there that hasn't been drilled since the 80s. So that's probably the two I'd be drilling uh, within the next few months. Fabulous, sounds very exciting. I hope that answered your question, Sandra. We'll move on to question number two. This is from Chris Peterson. Um, I will put this one to Don, as you mentioned lithium in your presentation there. Now, what are your views on lithium demand and supply in the near term? Really good question. Thanks for that one also. Uh, we're big believers in the lithium story. Tempest was originally a, a pure exploration, a lithium exploration company. Uh, we certainly, the, there's a lot of demand coming. Uh, the, the supply is the, the difficult thing because there seems to be a lot of early stage uh, lithium projects. There's a few very serious lithium mines around the place, but there's not a lot of them. So I'd say if I had to guess, I'd say the, the supply demand curve is going to be deviating significantly. And while I still have you there, we have an anonymous attendee who's asking, with gold holding strong, how do you see this open up opportunities for you? Uh, for Tempest, certainly uh, that provides a lot of opportunities because uh, being exposed to, to metals that are, that are uh, market favourable uh, is always a good thing for a company and, and we, we have a strong uh, bet towards gold. Uh, in terms of the price, it, it, who knows what it's going to do. It should be higher than it is, if you ask me, given the fundamentals. So uh, that's only only good for us. And I'll put that to you too, James. Um, with gold holding strong, how do you see this opening up opportunities for you? Yeah, I agree with uh, with Don. It's um, uh, sort of leaning on my my analyst experience. You know, we're in an inflationary environment. The gold price should be uh, probably a lot higher than what it is now. Uh, and we've been seeing it spike up and down as well. So. In terms of opportunities, yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we drive past three or four mines on the way to our, uh, our project in Kalgoorlie, and all of them have been going for about, I don't know, sort of 15 years or so. And they're not getting any, uh, they're certainly not getting bigger, they're getting smaller and they're, they're relying on stockpiles. And, and so that's uh, the opportunity is, you know, if we find something, we can put it through to those uh, processing plants very quickly and very cheaply, uh, opening opportunities for them wanting to deal with us or even to take us over potentially as well. So. I think you'll see a lot of that sort of stuff going on in the M&A space is combination of assets. Uh, people want resources because, uh, yeah, these these mines that have been running for, you know, 20 and 30 years aren't getting bigger <laughs> and it's getting harder to find. They're certainly getting deeper. So uh, near surface resources, uh, new opportunities, that's certainly the key, I think, going forward. Absolutely. And while I still have you there, James, uh, we'll finish off our Q&A for now. But I just wanted to ask you if you had any closing comments for our audience, any takeaway notes? Uh, for me? Um, yeah, look, I mean, the, the, I think you've just got to focus on, on explorers who, who put the money in the ground. And, and I think, you know, what, what Don's saying there, you know, a lot of the expiration of days gone by has been turn up with a drill rig and pattern drill everything. And you just can't do that anymore. It's just too expensive. It's also silly, you know, you want to go and spend your money wisely, you know, you want to sit back and look at the look at the overall picture, the structural picture, the geology, and then do it right. And Don did that last year with a methodical hole or two, which they found mineralization on without without actually wanting to target it in the first place. So that was great. Similarly, you know, we sit back Thanks. with structural consultants. We do that too, you know, and so we spend a lot of time in the background before we put any hole in the ground so that the maximum effort and the maximum value for shareholders is uh, is on that drill program. Thank you. Thanks very much, James. And back to you, Dom. Um, do you have any closing comments with regards to Tempest for our audience? No, I, to re reflect what James just said, uh, it, you, you have to look at companies that are doing new and, and, and doing things well. Uh, and uh, that's that's the, the key to 
through exploration in the modern world. So thanks for the kind words too. We, we also are a fan of what you're doing, so yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks for answering those queries there with great analysis. So on this note, I'd like to thank our audience for attending the webinar. I hope each one of you have found the session informative. And if you do want to delve further into equity and market updates, our audience can visit our media site at www.calkindmedia.com.au and you can visit our equity research website just calkind.com.au so stay tuned with calkind media for the upcoming investness webinar series i hope to see you all again thank you once again to both the presenters today it's been a fascinating subject who doesn't love gold and we're very active on our social media platform so you can stay connected with us there and if any of the audience does have any queries or wants to push any questions through to our two presenters today our email id is info at calchimemedia.com thanks once again everyone and that's the end of our webinar today and i hope you all have a great afternoon thank you